if you own a Sony crop sensor camera, you should have this lens. This is the Sigma 10 to 18 millimeter f 2.8. And in this video, allow me to give you five reasons why. But before that, let's roll in. Before anything else, I would like to officially welcome you to my channel. Thank you for making it past the intro. If you are into cameras, gadgets, technologies, all that good stuff, please do subscribe and hit that bell if you haven't yet. In that case, you won't miss out on anything from this channel. Shout out to Sigma Philippines for sending me this and for making this video possible. Having that out of the way, let's dive right into the topic. Like I said, if you are using a Sony APS-C body, you should have this lens in your bag. And let's not make this long, here are the 5 reasons why. This lens is without a doubt compact and portable, hence this is perfect for travel and go-to situations. As a matter of fact, in my recent trip to UAE, this was my main lens. Yes, that's right. And since it's super lightweight and portable, I've had zero problems the entire vacation. Like for real. It stands just like a regular Funko Pop and it weighs only 260 grams. And just so you can imagine, it's just a bit heavier than a regular smartphone. How crazy is that? For the build quality, I'd say you get what you pay for. It's not the most premium piece of glass, neither the most inexpensive in terms of the feel. It doesn't have any custom buttons, dials, and switches. And allow me to mention, it extends when you zoom out. I repeat, it extends when you zoom out. The base form is at 18mm and the extended form is the 10mm. Just have to let it out there. Nonetheless, I'd say it's perfect for travel since it's very compact and it's built to last. This lens has a constant f2.8 aperture. Like from 18mm to 10mm, it doesn't change aperture. Meaning to say, you don't have to worry about varying exposure when zooming in or out. And believe me, it may sound simple but in clutch situations, it's very useful. Like for real. But you might be wondering, is f2.8 enough? Well, that depends on how you define enough. If for vlogging, I'd say yes. Like I find it totally fine for vlogging. I love that it still gives me a decent background separation and it still performs even in low light. For cinematic videos, I'd say yes also. Just don't expect it to have a portrait look with creamy bokeh effect. After all, this is a wide lens ideal for landscape shots, may it be photos or videos. And speaking of landscape shots where you technically don't need fast aperture, this lens is more than good enough. Lastly, for talking head videos just like this, I'd say yes as well, like I couldn't be happier. As I've mentioned, I love that it still gives me a decent background separation. This lens can go from 10mm to 18mm, like the. It may not be the perfect all-rounder lens but for vlogging, I'd say this is very ideal. Especially at 10mm, even with active mode stabilization, it still is wide enough. Now if you want to use it for talking head videos, this is what it looks like at 18mm. Let's try zooming out to 10mm. There you go. A really wide angle perspective. I'm like what? 6 inches away from the tip of the lens. And just so you know, Peter McKinnon uses 15mm for his talking head videos. And guess what? 10 millimeters on an APS-C body is equivalent to 15 millimeters. So yeah, my point is you're like Peter McKinnon when you're using this lens. Yeah, And that's why, like I said, I couldn't be happier. Speaking of Peter who has many subscribers, if you aren't a subscriber yet of this channel, please do now. It would mean the world to me. Thank you. In regards to optical performance, for both photo and video, it is hard to hate this lens. As expected from a Sigma lens, this is tack sharp, like for real. From 10mm to 18mm, I am satisfied with the sharpness of this lens. But let's also consider that I don't do pixel peeping like many people out there. So yeah. As for chromatic aberration, flaring, and vignetting, there could be some, but I'd say it's pretty much well handled. In any case, those things are easily fixed in post. So not really a deal breaker, at least for me. Thus, in my personal opinion, for both socials and professional work, this lens has the potential. Despite being a great performing lens, by the time this video is made, the price of this lens is 
it may not be that cheap either but for its competitors and overall performance this is on the affordable side of things good job sigma that's it ladies and gentlemen as for conclusion if you are looking for a travel lens that's good for vlogging and landscape shots and that has superb optical performance and that doesn't break the bank you might want to look at the sigma 10 to 18 millimeter f 2.8 once again shout out to sigma philippines for making this video possible there you go folks i am sure i wasn't able to cover everything so let me know your thoughts in the comment section or we can connect on instagram or on facebook as i end if you are getting value from this video please do like and subscribe for more not super technical but rather practical approach to gadgets and technologies until then thank you for watching By the way, I just realized I wasn't able to mention about the autofocusing performance of this lens because yeah, this is an autofocus lens. So let's try it out. Fair enough. Nonetheless, I'd say it's perfect. Nonetheless, I'd say it's perfect for travel. Nonetheless, I'd say it's perfect for travel. Nonetheless, since nonetheless, I'd say it's perfect for travel because it's nonetheless, I'd say it's perfect for travel because nonetheless, I'd say it's perfect. Nonetheless, I'd say it's perfect for travel since it's very. Nonetheless, I'd say it's per. Nonetheless, I'd say it's perfect for travel since it's very. <laughs>